Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. All right, so right now I want to fill you guys in on a little thing called alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. And whoa, that sounds like a lot to say and really overwhelming, but check it out because this is just a uh, kind of a complex title for something that's pretty simple. So hey, we'll get into this, you guys, but before we talk about anything in detail, I always like to start out with some general features, right? So hey, let's go ahead and write these up here. All right, so first things first, you guys, let's see what these alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compounds even look like, all right? Okay, so this is an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound, but it's not too scary looking, right? So let's see what earned it this long, complicated title. All right, so hey, you've got a carbonyl. One carbon away from the carbonyl is called the alpha carbon. Two carbons away is known as the beta carbon. So let's fill that in. One carbon away from the carbonyl is known as the alpha carbon. Two carbons away is known as the beta carbon. Okay, so what we have here is a double bond across the alpha-beta bond with respect to the carbonyl, right? So hey, a double bond, this is considered unsaturation, units of unsaturation. Units of unsaturation came in the form of double bonds, triple bonds, and rings. What did it mean to be unsaturated, you guys? To not have the max number of hydrogens attached, right? So a double bond, this is an example of unsaturation. So hey, across the alpha-beta bond, we have unsaturation. And this is with, with respect to the carbonyl. So we call this an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Okay, so hey, kind of a complex description of this compound, but it should be pretty straightforward, right you guys? Okay, so this is an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. But we've all seen double bonds, alkenes, and we've seen carbonyls react before. So let's see what makes this guy special. Why do we give this guy a special name? Okay, so hey, let's write a note up here. So note, this is a compound with two electrophiles. So you could say, note, this is a compound with not one electrophile, but two electrophiles. With two electrophiles, exclamation point. This is a big thing. This is how this deals with its reactivity, okay? Okay, so it's pretty obvious when you look at a carbonyl, you know that a carbon of a carbonyl is getting its electrons taken away from it by the oxygen, making that carbon partially positive, making it an electrophile. So it's obvious that we have one electrophile in this compound, but where is the second electrophile coming from? Well, let's write something down. Because in order to find the second electrophile, you have to look at the resonance structures for this compound. So look at the resonance structures. Look at resonance. Okay, so let me go ahead and redraw this over here so we can draw its resonance structures. So here's the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. But this guy has resonance structures because check out what you can do. You can actually use these two electrons in this double bond, shift that over, kick the electrons up to the oxygen, and check out what this reveals. 
This is gonna put a negative charge on the oxygen, no big deal. But look what happens when you shift this double bond over to here. That is gonna put a positive charge on that carbon, revealing the second electrophile, okay? So it's no surprise that you have an electrophile at the carbon of the carbonyl, right? This is one electrophile. But check it out because we also have another carbon here that is an electrophile. This carbon is also lacking electrons, which the resonance structure shows us because this oxygen is basically pulling these electrons over here enough to shift the double bond to this position and kick the electrons up to the oxygen, which puts a partial positive charge or a positive charge on that carbon, okay? And don't forget to put your resonance brackets here to enclose your resonance structures. But what I want you guys to see here, we'll say it one more time. This compound has two electrophiles built into it. How do you know? Well, look at the resonance structures. Here's one resonance structure and here's the other. In this one, we can clearly see that hey, a carbon of a carbonyl is an electrophile. It's getting its electrons taken away by the oxygen, making it electron poor, making it an electrophile. But it's not until we shift this double bond over, kick the electrons up to the oxygen, that we reveal the secret positive charge on that carbon, you guys, making this carbon a second area where this compound is an electrophile.